Now, the subject that I'm going to go into is going to be a very, very important subject. And it's called the water baptism. Now, I chose to go into this very important subject, the water baptism, because I happen to be on YouTube. And I happen to see a video by the IUIC, Israelite United in Christ, under Nathaniel 7, who's the leader and elder of his congregation, his church, Israelite United in Christ. And he was doing a subject about a year ago about the water baptism in which he uh, attempted to break down the water baptism to us, those of us in the listening audience that watched that video. And he tried to tell us that the water baptism is, is no longer null and void. I mean, it's null and void. We no longer need it or, or have to have it. Or uh, He actually rejected it in so many words. He taught against it. Now, that's actually blasphemy right there. That's actually blasphemy because I'm going to show you throughout the scriptures that we must be baptized. That is a prerequisite that all believers in the Most High in Christ or who the world calls Christ must be baptized in water. He says no. You know why? Because that is the doctrine and teaching that they have learned out of that original UPK. 1 West 125th Street up in Harlem, New York under Ariya, Kazakh Shah, Yeshaya, Marshaw, Laab, and Yaikwab. You understand? That, that school is now known as the Israelite Church of God in Jesus Christ. That church under Tazadakia today is nothing but the modern day order of the Pharisees. Okay? Arya and them built that school after the modern day order of the Pharisees. This is the reason why they have so much heresy within the teachings of their organizations. And all these different splinter groups, as I told you, brothers and sisters, and all the videos I've done, or most of the videos that I've done, that those different Israelite groups that, 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 that broke away from the original UPK, Israelite Church of, of, of God and Jesus Christ, and excuse me, well, they're now called the Israelite Church of God and Jesus Christ, but they were known as the Israeli Church of UPK. Okay? They are the modern day order of the Pharisees. And those brothers have poisoned the minds of all of the brothers and sisters that broke into these splinter camps uh, and now are teaching on the YouTube. And they're feeding our people corruption and lies and false teachings that, in which they learned out of that original school. Now what I'm going to do is, I'm going to go into the subject of the water baptism. Because I, I always meant to get around to it. But there was a few brothers on the comment board that did ask me, brother, can you do a subject on the baptism? And I said yes, because I, I know I needed to get into that. And I thank brothers for actually giving me that push and that inspiration to go forward with this subject. So yes, brother, I'm going to go into it now. And I'm going to do a subject about the water baptism. Okay, so I want you to pull out your pads, your Bibles, and your pens. And I want you to follow along with me as we go along. And I'm going to show Elder Nathaniel 7 of Israelite United in Christ that he taught our people wrong. Okay? He gave a false interpretation of scripture. And he also lied and told our people that we do not have to be baptized in water. Now, here is the very first scripture we're going to go to. Here's Ezekiel the 16th chapter verse 1. Again, the word of the Lord came unto me saying, Son of man. Caused Jerusalem to know her abomination. Let's stop right there. The Most High was commissioning the prophet Ezekiel to tell the children of Israel, represented here as Jerusalem, about a lot of the abominable practices that they were practicing in his eyesight, that he was displeased with. When you watch all my videos, my videos are not attacking brothers. My videos are not coming against other camps uh, in rivalry. It's a lot of it, most of it is correction and love talk. So just as the prophet was told by the Most High to tell the children of Israel about their abominable practices that they are practicing within my eyesight. That is a job, that is another job of a servant to go out and tell your people the things that you are doing that's wrong in the sight of the Most High. So this is what Ezekiel was told to do. Verse Two, son of man caused Jerusalem to know her abomination. You see that? And say, thus says the Lord God unto Jerusalem, they, thy birth and thy nativity is of the land of Canaan. Thy father was an Amorite and thy mother an Hittonite. Now, I'll go into that <clears throat> in another subject and break all that down. But I'm just going to give you a kind of like a summary of what uh, Ezekiel the 16th chapter is talking about. It's actually talking about Israel. And the Most High is using the analogy of the children of Israel as a woman having a newborn baby. 
And when a newborn baby is born out of the womb of a mother, there are certain procedures that an, a mother would perform to order to take care of this child. So the Heavenly Father is using the analogy of Israel as a newborn baby. And the steps and the procedures that he's going to do to order to take care of this child which is being born into the world. And how was Israel to be born into the world? By the laws, the statutes, and commandments that he gave Israel. And then he began to exalt Israel. But before the laws, statutes, and commandments were given to Israel, this is how Israel was uh, to be spiritually uh, looked at as a child or a baby because they didn't know what was right and what was wrong before the eyes of the Most High. You understand? So now with that, let's go back. Jeremiah the 16th chapter, verse 3. And say, Thus says the Lord God unto Jerusalem, Thy birth and thy nativity is of the land of Canaan. Thy father was an Amorite, and thy mother an Hittonite. And as for thy nativity, in the day thou was born, thy navel was not cut, neither was thou washed in water to supply us, to supply thee, supply thee, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, thou was not salted at all, nor swaddled at all. Okay? None I pity thee to do any of these unto thee, to have compassion upon thee when Israel was suffering captivity in the land of Egypt. There was harsh bondage and captivity upon the children of Israel. There was no one to coddle us, no one to comfort us before Moses went set, was sent to Israel. We were under the hands of our oppressors. So the scripture says, verse 5, none I pity thee to, to do any of these un, unto thee, to have compassion upon thee. But thou was cast out in the open field. The open field represents the world. To the loathing of thy person in the day thou was born. When I passed by thee and saw thee polluted in thy own blood, I said unto thee, When thou was in thy blood, live. Yea, and I said unto thee, When thou was in thy blood, live. Meaning, he's telling you to stand up now. Even when Israel was committing abominations without knowing the laws, before the laws were given to them, the Most High is saying, stand up and live, because I'm going to girt you up. I'm going to rise you up. I'm going to choose you, and I'm going to give you my laws, my statutes, and my commandments, and you will be a people unto myself. I'm going to prove it. Verse 7, I have caused thee to multiply as the bud of the field. Thou hast increased in wax and great, and thou art come to the, uh, excellent ornaments. Thy breasts are fashioned, and thy hair is grown, whereas thou was naked and bare. Now when I pass by thee and look upon thee, behold, thy time was the time of love. And I spread my skirt over thee, and covered thy nakedness. Yea, I swear unto thee, and entered into a covenant with thee, says the Lord God, and thou became mine. You see that? Officially, the Heavenly Father had always chose Israel. But when he gave his law, statutes, and commandments to Moses to give to the children of Israel, that's when officially he stamped it and made Israel his. Verse 9. Then washed I thee with water. Yea, I thoroughly washed away thy blood from thee, and I anointed thee with oil. Now many brothers will say that washing of that water was represented the word, the laws, the statutes, and commandments. That's part of it. But I'm going to show you another deeper meaning as we go on in the video, this is all going to make sense to you. When it says, Then wash I thee with water, yea, I thoroughly washed away thy blood from thee, and I anointed thee with oil. I'm going to go into the deep allegories and, 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 and prophecies in the scriptures to show you that it was not just the word, but it's an actual physical uh, uh, procedure that Israel had to do in order to get right with the Most High. As we go on, I'm going to show you. Now, let's go to the book of Matthew and let's get into the dynamics of the subject. Here is the book of Matthew, the third chapter, verse 1. If you have your Bibles, I want you to follow along with me as we go along in this very, very important subject. Here is Matthew 3, verse 1. In those days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is he that was spoken of by the prophet um, Elias, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Let's jump down to verse 5. Then went out to him, then went out to him Jerusalem and all Judea, and all the region round about Jordan, 
and were baptized of him in Jordan confessing their sins. Now what is this baptism? What is this baptism that this scripture is talking about right here uh, in Matthew the third chapter verse 14? Let's find out as we go on. Verse 6, and, and were baptized of him in Jordan confessing their sins. But when he saw many, but when he saw many of the Pharisees and the Sadducees come to his baptism, he said unto them, O generation of vipers, who has warned you to flee from the wrath to come. Now what did John the Baptist call these Pharisees and Sadducees that came to his baptism? Vipers. Snakes, in other words. This is what the modern day order of the Pharisees today is the Israelite Church of God in Jesus Christ under Tazadakia. The former original UPK, Israeli Church of, of UPK, Universal Practical Knowledge under Ariat and them. They are the modern day order of the Pharisees. They are the vipers and serpents and snakes of this book. When when John the Revelator was I mean John the Baptist was speaking to the Pharisees and Sadducees, that's who he was talking about today. That's who I'm talking about today. And all those different splinter groups that broke away from the original UPK, they're all vipers. They're all serpents. They're all snakes. Because they're all teaching that false Pharisee doctrine of which they got out of that original school. And who shall warn them of the destruction that shall come upon them without, without, if they do not repent? Here is verse 7. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to his baptism, he said unto them, O generation of vipers, who, who has warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bring forth therefore fruits meet for repentance. And think not to say within yourselves we have Abraham to our father. For I say unto you that God is able to able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. So what John the Baptist was doing he was condemning the Pharisees. The minute they came to his baptism he condemned them. He cut them. When you watch my videos my videos go straight to the heart of many of these different groups. And, and I'm going to tell you something. Many of them really can't rebuttal it. They really don't go into scriptures and prove any scriptures to prove me wrong. Because the scriptures cut them so, so deeply and it cut them so hard. Now I'm going to show you that Israelite united in Christ under Nathaniel 7 lied to you about the baptism. Now, let's go to the book of Luke, the 7th chapter. Let's go to Luke, the 7th chapter. We're going to read verse... We're going to read verse 24. Listen to this. We're going to read Luke, Luke the 7th chapter verse 24. And when the messenger of John was departed, he began to speak unto the people concerning John. What went ye out in the wilderness for to see? A reed shaken with the wind. But what went ye out for to see? A man clothed in soft raiment? Behold, they which are gorgeously apparelled and live deliciously are in, courts, are in king's courts. But what went ye out to see? A prophet. Yea, I say unto you, and, and much more than a prophet, this is he of whom it is written. Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare thy way before thee. For I say unto you, among those that are born of women, there is not a greater prophet than John the Baptist. But he that is least in the kingdom of God is greater than he. Listen carefully. And all the people that heard him, and the publicans justified God, or justified the Most High, but again, I'm not going to switch up the words. I'm going to read the Bible as it is. Being baptized with the baptism of John, meaning they went down in the water and they were baptized of John, right? And John's baptism of being baptized in the water. But the Pharisees and the lawyers rejected the counsel of God against themselves, being not baptized of him. That's why these different Hebrew Israelite groups don't accept the water baptism today. Because the ancient Pharisees and the Sadducees, they didn't accept it. Ariah, Moshe, and all those guys out of that original UPK, Yeshaya, Kazakh, Shar, Laab, even Bivens, who they refer to as Abba Bivens, but it's Ebar Bunyamin, but they refer to him as Abba Bivens. And the word Abba is an Aramaic word which means father. Christ said call no earthly man on earth your father. No spiritual man on earth your father. For there is one who is, in, uh, who is your father. And that is your father that art in heaven. But they referred to him as Abba Bivens. Which is blasphemy. When the Messiah already told us not to call no spiritual man on earth your father. Okay. 
They rejected the baptism, and that's the teaching of the original UPK and also the ISUPK under Yohanan today. They don't accept the water baptism. They say the baptism is just a word. But we just showed you here that John the Baptist was baptizing people physically in biological water, actual physical water. You understand? But they don't accept the baptism. Why? Because the ancient Pharisees rejected it. And so did the Sadducees. So when Ariadnum began to build up the, 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 the original UPK, they taught against the baptism. Because they built that school after the modern day order of the Pharisees. The actual ancient order of the Pharisees. So they rejected the water baptism. Let's read that part again. 29, Luke 7 and 29. And all the people that heard him and the publicans justified God being baptized with the baptism of John. All the people heard the Messiah speak. And they were baptized unto the baptism of John. Unto the baptism of repentance. But the Pharisees and lawyers rejected the counsel of God against themselves. Being not baptized of him. You see that? The Pharisees re rejected the baptism. Therefore they would re uh, reject the baptism of the Messiah. If they rejected the baptism of John the Baptist, then of course they would reject the baptism of the Messiah. And that's why these different Israelite groups and these splinter groups that broke away, ISU, uh, IUIC, I mean, uh, IUIC, Israelite United in Christ, the Israelite uh, School of UPK, Ambassadors of Christ, um, House of David, GMS, Great Millstone, uh, Israel Yasha Allah, and the list goes on of other Israelite groups that came out of the original uh, UPK, they all reject the water baptism because they all have that Pharisee mind on them. Okay? Because they're all still holding on to Ariah's false teaching. So that's why they reject the baptism. So the scripture says that the Pharisees and the lawyers, which is, you know, the Pharisees and Sadducees rejected the baptism of Christ, which means there is no salvation for them. And they rejected the baptism of John. Okay? Now, from there, let's go to the book of, Ma uh, of Matthew, the third chapter. We're going to read verse 11. Let's go back there. Matthew, the third chapter. We're going to read verse 11. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost or Holy Spirit. Holy Ghost is the Holy Spirit. Okay. And with fire. That fire represents his second coming when he's coming back to scorch this earth with fire. Okay? Let's jump over to verse 13. Then cometh Jesus unto Galilee, to, to Jordan, unto John, to be baptized of him. Now here is the Messiah coming to John the Baptist to be baptized. How are you trying to tell us that we don't have to be baptized in water when the Messiah uh, did it? Now listen. But John forbade him, saying, I have need to be baptized of thee, and cometh thou to me? Then Jesus, we know his name is not Jesus, his Hebrew name, his true Hebrew name, but I'm just reading the scripture as it is, okay? Go and watch my video, A Word to the Hebrew Israelites, and I break it all down to you. His true Hebrew name will be revealed to us on his second coming, okay? And Jesus, answering, said unto him, Suffer it to be so now. For thus it becometh us to, to fulfill all righteousness. That's powerful right there. Let's read that again. 15. And Jesus answering said unto him, Suffer it to be so now. For thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. All righteousness. Meaning it is a righteous thing to be baptized in water. I was baptized in water. Many of you other brothers and sisters have been baptized in water. You have done a beautiful and glorious and righteous work for the kingdom of the Most High. But these other Israelite groups teach other brothers and sisters that you don't have to be baptized in water. Yet the Messiah was baptized. John the Baptist baptized him and said, it is a righteous thing to fulfill. It is, it is becoming unto us, us to fulfill all righteousness. All righteousness is to be baptized in water is a manifestation of all righteousness that the Father has bestowed upon each and every one of us who are believers. You must be baptized in water. If the Messiah did it, why shouldn't we? Verse 16, and Jesus, when his, his, uh, and Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water. And lo, the heavens were opened unto him. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him, 
And lo, a voice from heaven saying, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. It was a blessing, a blessed thing when the Messiah went down in the water to be an example to all of us of how to please the Father. One avenue or one aspect of how to please the Father is to go down into the water. Because the water symbolically represents you dying in your past life and you are being regenerated or reborn into the new man or, or into your new world, your new life. So it spiritually represents a spiritual form of, of regeneration. Of you dying uh, in your old mind and being reborn into your new mind. Into your new, into your new body, into your new flesh, into your new spirit, into your new soul. You understand? It's like you going back into, into the womb or the placenta of your mother's womb and being reborn all over again. Now you must walk on in the spirit and walk on towards your new life. So it's a spiritual transformation. The dying of the old man and the emerging of the new man. But these other Israelite groups reject that. Therefore, they're still in the sin of their old man, of their old body, of their old flesh. They have not been conformed into their new life. They have not been transformed into their new life. So they will die in their sins. Okay? Now the scripture says, And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. The Heavenly Father was pleased when the Messiah did this act. Okay? This procedure and went down in the water. To be an example to us that we would follow after him. And this is how this would please the Father. Remember what I read to you in the book of uh, Ezekiel, the 16th chapter, that he washed us. This is how he's washing us, through the actual water and the spirit. The physical uh, baptism by water, and now you must walk on in the spirit, meaning you are washing your mind up. You're cleaning your mind up, you're cleaning your spirit up, and you're walking on towards your new life. Okay? Now, let's go to the book of Matthew. Matthew, the 17th chapter, let's get verse 1. You must be baptized in physical water, brothers. As we go along, I'm going to show you more. Here is Matthew, the 17th chapter, verse 1. And after six days, Jesus talked with Peter, James, and John, his brother, and, and bringeth them up into a high mountain apart, and was transfigured before them, and his face did shine as the sun, and his raiment was white as, as the light. And behold, there appeared unto him Moses and Elias, talking with him. Then answered Peter and said unto Jesus, or the Messiah, but I don't want to switch up the words. I'm just going to read it the way it is. Because there are many brothers and sisters that are coming out of the Christian mindset that if they hear you twisting up this, the name and stuff like that, and, and it's, you know, we're going to use wisdom in dealing with our brothers and sisters that are babies out there. Okay? And said unto Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If thou wilt, let us make here three tabernacles, one for thee. And one for Moses and one for Elias. While yet he spake, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them. And behold, a voice out of, out of the cloud which said, This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. You see that? The father told the disciples to hear my beloved son in, in whom I am well pleased. And listen to him. I have given him authority and I have given him an order. And he will follow it out. The way I commissioned him to do it. So what he tells you, obey him. Verse 6. And when the disciples heard it, they fell on their face and were sore afraid. And Jesus came and touched them and said, Arise, be not afraid. And when they had lifted up their eyes, they saw no man save Jesus only. So the scripture told us to hear the Messiah. What the Father told the Messiah, the Messiah is to relate to us. So hear ye him. Let's read that again. Verse 5. Matthew 17 and 5. While he yet spake, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them. And behold, a voice out of the cloud which said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. So that's why when John the Baptist was told by the Messiah to do this, John the Baptist knew he had to baptize him. You see? So the Messiah is telling us this is a procedure that we have to go through. Let's prove it. Let's go to Matthew, the third chapter. We're going to stay in the book of Matthew for a minute. Okay. Let's go back to Matthew, the third chapter. Let's read verse 13 again. Then cometh Jesus from Galilee to, jo to Jordan unto, unto John to be baptized of him. But John forbade him, saying, I have need 
to be baptized, I have need to be baptized of thee, and cometh thou to me? And Jesus answering said unto him, Suffer it to be so now, for thus it becometh us to do to fulfill all righteousness. Then he suffered him. You see that? Meaning Christ told him that this is a manifestation of of all righteousness that the Father proclaims that all Israelites and all believers on him must observe. So you've got to do this. So if the Messiah went down in the water, who are you to tell other brothers and sisters out there that they can't, they, they, they're not supposed to go down in the water if the Messiah did it? You guys are anti-Christ, man. All of you guys that came out of that splinter one west camp, I mean that, that uh, original one west camp, into, and you have broken yourselves into different splinter groups, you guys are you guys are antichrist and you guys are, are reprobates. You're blasphemers also. And the Most High is going to punish a lot a lot of you brothers out there if you don't break away from these splinter groups that came out of the original UPK. Okay, because you're all teaching lies, man. All right, the Pharisees and the Sadducees rejected the baptism of John. Thus, they re they rejected the baptism of the Messiah. So they can't see the kingdom of the Most High. The Pharisees was already proclaimed through the prophecies that they couldn't enter into the kingdom of the Most High. That's what the modern day UPK is. Which is known as the Israelite Church of God and Jesus Christ. Now you have another splinter group called the Israelite School of UPK. They're all under the sentence, man. They're all under that prerequisite of destruction. Because they all came out of that original school. And they're still following the teachings of Ariah. Which is the modern day order of the Pharisees. Alright. St. John the 14th chapter, we're going to read verse 11. Believe me that I am in the Father, in the Father in me. Or else believe me for, for verily, for very works sake. Ver, verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also. You see that? So the works that the Messiah did, we're supposed to do those works also. As he went down in the water and was baptized, we are supposed to follow after him. The works that I do, you're supposed to do right after me. Let's read it again. Uh, St. John, at the uh, 14th chapter, we're going to read verse 12. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also. And greater works than those shall he do, because I go unto my Father. So, the Messiah said that the works that I do, if you believe on me, then you should do the works that I do. Do as I do. So why don't these brothers believe in going down in the water? If the Messiah did it, why shouldn't you go down in the water? Because the Pharisees rejected the baptism of John. This is why they reject it. Because they are of that modern day order of the Pharisees. That is why. Now, let's go to the book of John. The third chapter. Here is St. John, the third chapter, verse 1. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God. For no man can do these miracles that thou, that thou doest except God be with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said unto him, how can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb to be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit. You must be born of the water, symbolically representing the baptism. You going down into the water is like you going back into the womb of your mother to be spiritually reborn a second time. Now the Spirit is the word. See, there's two baptisms. You going into the physical water is a symbolic representation of the death and burial of your old life, and now you are being reborn into your new life. Now when it says the spirit, you must now walk in your new life. You know, the, you know, the scriptures tell you that there are three that testify on earth and, and in heaven. The water, the word, and the blood. You understand what I mean? The blood of the Messiah the water, the baptism, and the word, and the spirit. We must now walk in the spirit now. Once we go through this procedure, we must now walk in the spirit. So we're walking on into our new life now. Okay? Jesus, uh, verse 5, St. John 3 and 5. Verily, verily, I say, uh, Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and, and of the spirit, 
he cannot enter into the kingdom of, of God or kingdom of the Most High. Those splinter Israelite groups that came out of one west, they can't see the kingdom because they reject the water baptism. Just as the Pharisees rejected, as I showed you. The Pharisees rejected the baptism of John, thus they rejected the baptism of the Messiah. They can't see the kingdom. So those other Israelite groups, all of them, uh, GMS, uh, Israelite School of UPK, Israelite Church of God and Jesus Christ, the House of David, all those different groups, man. They can't see the kingdom of the Most High unless they go through this procedure. But they've already blasphemed and said, no, we're not dealing with the baptism of water. The, wa the washing of the, uh, the word is by, you know, the, the washing of water is the, is the word. I'm going to go to all that. I'm going to deal with that. These guys will have perverted the scriptures because Ariah taught them that lie. Yeshaya and all of them. It wasn't just Ariah. You can't put all the blame on Ariah. It's all those elders in that school that lied on these guys, uh, lied on the Mosai and taught these guys these lies. All right. Verse six, which is born of the flesh, that which is born of the flesh, that which is born of the flesh is flesh. That which is born of the spirit is spirit. So those brothers that are born of the of the flesh, meaning they don't have the spirit in them. To see the truth of, of, of the scripture. So many of these brothers and sisters make mistakes. Those that are of the flesh are those that are what, what the Bible calls the natural man. Those that are of the spirit are the spiritual man and spiritual woman. They can see the spirit. They deal with the spirit of the Most High. You understand? They, they deal with the spirit of, the, of these words. But those that are in the flesh won't understand. So they denounce it and they make a mockery of it. They reject it. Okay? Now, let's give you a preset. Let's go to 1 Corinthians. Let me show you that these brothers, they don't have the spirit. So they reject it. They make a mockery of it. Okay? 1 Corinthians, the second chapter, we're going to read verse 11. For what man knoweth the things of man, save the spirit of man, which is in him? Even so, the things of, the, of God knoweth no man but the spirit of God. You see that? The spirit of God knows the spirit of the Most High. And, and also, a spiritual brother will also know another spiritual brother, and a spiritual sister will also know another spiritual sister. But that same spiritual brother will know a brother or sister who's of the flesh, who's living in, a, in, a natural, in the natural uh, mindset. They haven't been reborn spiritually. That's why they act the way they do, and they do the things that they do. Okay? Verse 12. Now, when we receive not the spirit of the world, now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, or the Most High, but like I said, I don't want to change up the words, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God, which things also we speak not in the words which man's wisdom teaches. We don't speak in the, in the things in which man's wisdom teaches. We speak the things that the Most High has given us through his holy and divine prophets and foremost, the Messiah. Those are the words that we speak. Those are the words that we believe in, and we manifest it out to those who want to hear. Verse 13, which things also we speak not in the words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Ghost teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. You see that? So the spiritual man is not going to get this. So those guys, they claim they're in the spirit, but they're not. Because the, the, the Most High said, those who he has chosen, none can pluck out of his hand. He gave the spirit to those who he chose and gave the truth to those who he's chosen. Those brothers are of the mindset of the Pharisees. Now, I will give Elder Rikah of the GOCC credit because he's the one who gave me that breakdown. As I told you, I sat in his house down Erie Avenue and he was the one that gave me the breakdown because I was coming under that U UPK vibration of the baptism is just the word. But Elder Rakas sat in the house and said, where are you with the scriptures? And we, we, we was going through the precepts. And I even told him, you know, well, okay, the baptism is the word. He said, nah, let's go to the scriptures. And he showed it to me. And right then when he showed it to me, he was right on that. I'll give him credit on that. He was right on that. I said, let's go to the, the, the birth of the Messiah. He said, I can teach the birth of the Messiah as you do, brother, the virgin birth. And I can also teach that Joseph was the physical father. I just stay away from that. But now he's on the YouTube teaching that Joseph was the physical father of Christ now. But he sat in the house and told me, I don't touch that. I don't deal with the birth of, of, of Christ. 
I got the breakdowns that um, Christ was born through the virgin birth. I, got, I can teach that, which means he knows the truth. And I can also teach that Joseph was the father of, of Christ also. So I just stay away from that. I don't teach the GOCC that. That was back like 2008. Mm, yeah, about 2008 when he told me that, when I sat in his house. Now he's on the internet teaching that Joseph was the father, but he told me, I don't touch it. I stay away from that. But he's the one who gave me the breakdown of the, the, the baptism. And I saw it the minute I saw it. And then I showed it to other brothers, but they rejected it. But no, this is right. Because I always believed that we had to be baptized. You know, but when I started getting around those UPK guys and they started pushing this doctrine of rejection of the baptism, some deep in my heart still said, no, nah, I don't really see that, but I was rolling with it. But when I got the pure understanding of it, I knew the spirit of the Most High woke me up and he showed me that, yes, we must be baptized in water. Okay, so let's read again. St. John, the third chapter, verse five. Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. You cannot enter into the kingdom of the Most High if you refuse the physical water and the spiritual water. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. See that? Those brothers and sisters that have that, that worldly mindset, that carnal mindset, that natural man and natural woman mindset, the Father ain't dealing with them. And that which is born of the Spirit is Spirit. You see that? Marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. The wind bloweth where it listens, and thou hearest the, the sound thereof, but can not tell whence it cometh, and whither it goeth. So every one that is born of the Spirit, so that every one that is born of the Spirit, we come from various different directions all over the four corners of the earth. You cannot direct the Spirit to say, okay, these ones are coming from here. and these, No, we're coming from all over the place. You can't, you can't um, try to direct the spirit. The spirit travels throughout the four corners of the earth and it wakes up brothers and sisters as the Father commissions the Holy Spirit to go throughout the breadth of the earth to wake up those who he has chosen to, to get this knowledge and to get this understanding. You're not going to get it if you weren't chosen. So those other Israelite groups out there that reject the water baptism, they're not going to get it because they weren't chosen. Let's jump down to verse 22. St. John 3 and 22. After these things came Jesus and his disciples onto the land of Judea. And there he tarried with them and baptized. And John also was baptizing in Anon near Selim because there was much water there. And they came and were baptized. And John was not yet cast into prison. Then there arose a question between some of John's disciples and the Jews about purifying. And they came unto John and said unto him, Rabbi, he that was with thee beyond Jordan, to whom thou bearest witness, behold, the same baptizes, and all men come to him. John the Baptist and the Messiah were there at the same time. And a baptism was going on between the Messiah and his apostles and John and his apostles. Disciples, listen. John answered and said, A man can receive nothing except it be given him from heaven. Those brothers that reject the water baptism, this wasn't the gift that was given to heaven to, um, from heaven to them. You know, the, the Father didn't give them the gift to open up their minds, their understanding, to know what the Scripture is saying about the actual physical water and the, per, and the, and the uh, meaning, the, the uh, precise meaning of what the water baptism symbolically represents. That's why they make mistakes in trying to interpret the scriptures. All right. John answered and said, a man can receive nothing except it be given him from heaven. Ye yourselves bear me witness that I said, I am not the, the Christ, but that I am sent before him. He that has his bride is the bridegroom, but the friend of the bridegroom which standeth and heareth him rejoices greatly because of the bridegroom's voice. This is my joy, there, therefore is fulfilled. John the Baptist knew that the Messiah must move on now and outpopulate him in believers now. He knew that. He knew that his time and his mission was almost up and now it was time for the Messiah to take it, take on the pass on the ranks to the Messiah and that he may go on and preach on toward the kingdom of the Most High. Okay? 30. He must increase, but I must decrease. He that cometh from above is above all. He that is of the earth is earthly and speaketh of the, of the earth. 
He that cometh from heaven is above all. You see that? And what he has seen and heard that he testifies, no man receiveth his testimony. He that receiveth his testimony has set to his seal that God is true. Meaning he has set a seal. Up, the, the Heavenly Father actually put a seal upon our hearts. Our minds. Our souls. That we accept this. Those brothers have not been given the seal. Those other Israelite groups, they have not been, not been given the seal. Because they reject the baptism. They reject the water. Okay? Verse 34. For he whom God has sent speaketh the words of God. For God giveth not the Spirit by measure unto him. For the Father loveth the Son, and has given all things unto him. He that believeth on the Son has everlasting life, and he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God shall abide on him. Well, those Israelite groups said, we believe in Yahweh Shah, but you don't believe in everything of Yahweh Shah. Yahweh Shah, as you, as you want to claim him, was baptized, and he told us, as I do these things, do ye also. You reject that, so you, don't, you truly don't believe in Yahweh Shah. You reject the baptism, so you don't believe on him. Alright? Now, many of you foolish brothers out there, like Israel, Yasha Allah, a camp I used to walk with for seven years, well, actually six years, they tried to teach me that, uh, you know, the baptism, you know, uh, that was during the time of, 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 of Christ. That was, time, that was during the time of the Messiah. And um, the earth, we, oh, we, we, oh, this is one explanation. We're not in Israel anymore. The, the, world, the, the, the water over there in Israel was holy water. That's God's water. But over here, this water is polluted. So we can't be baptized over here in this Western Hemisphere because over there in the land, I think um, I heard Rapaya, high priest of Pennsylvania, Rapaya Allah of the Israelite Church and God of Jesus Christ on the radio show, the Hidden, the Hidden Truth Radio, I mean the Truth Radio show, he was saying that also that over there is God's water. Just like the school I was studying with told me the same thing. That, that's God's water over there. But this water over here in the Western Hemisphere has been polluted. Let's go to the book of Genesis, the 28th chapter. Genesis, the 28th chapter, we're going to read verse 10. And Jacob went out and, and from Beersheba and went toward Haran. And he lighted upon a certain place and tarried there all night because the sun was set. And he took off the shoe, the, the, the stones of, of, and he took of the stones of that place and put them for his p pillow and lay down in that place to sleep. And he had a dream and behold a ladder set up on the earth and the top of it reached to heaven. And behold the angels of God ascending and descending on it. What does that mean? That's what the churches call Jacob's Ladder. That is Jacob's Ladder. And we've heard gospel songs talking about climbing Jacob's Ladder. What is the whole symbolic representation of Jacob's Ladder? It represents God, the Most High. His sovereignty over this earth and his constant, constant intervention within the affairs of man on earth. Everything on this planet belongs to the Mosai. Not just the body of water that's over in the Middle East or, or in the land of Israel or in that region of the world. But every body, every body of ocean, lake, rivers, streams, oceans, and seas belongs to the Mosai. But these Pharisee groups try to make satanic excuses, diabolical satanic excuses to tell followers and supporters of theirs that we're not supposed to be baptized. That water over there is God's water. This water over here is polluted. That's foolishness. The angels descending and ascending to heaven and back on earth represents the Heavenly Father's constant intervention in the affairs of man on this earth. And it also represents his sovereign power and his sovereign control over the earth. Verse 13. And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham, thy father. And the God of Isaac, the land wherein thou layest to thee, will I give it into thy seed. And thy seed shall be as the dust of the earth. This was a proclamation to Jacob that the children of Israel, his, his children, were going to populate. And through the children of Israel, 
all nations shall be blessed because when the Messiah sets foot back on earthly soil all the nations are coming under Israel and in that 1000 year millennial reign of the Messiah's rulership there will be peace on earth and all the nations that are blessed to make it in those who are not destroyed during the third world war they will endure salvation forever so verse 14 and thy seed shall be as the dust of the earth and thou shalt spread abroad to the west to the, to the east and to the north and to the south and in thee and in thy seed shall all the families of the earth be blessed and that beautiful and glorious day of the kingdom of the Messiah for his 1000 year millennial reign before he merges his kingdom in with the father revelation the 21st chapter go and watch my video kingdom of heaven and second coming of Christ the Gentiles will be there too they're going to be under a period of servitude under Israel they're going to be under submission under Israel but they're going to be in the kingdom too okay now just wanted to share that with you let's go to get another precept to show you that God the Most High is in total control of everything on this earth okay in every body of ocean rivers lakes streams all belong to the Most High here is the book of St. John the first chapter we're gonna read verse 49 Nathaniel L Nathaniel L answered and said unto him rabbi thou art the son of God thou art the king of Israel Jesus answered and said unto him because I said unto thee I saw thee under the fig tree believe it thou thou shalt see greater things than that than these and verily he said unto them verily verily excuse me and he said unto him verily verily I say unto you hereafter ye shall see heaven open and the angels of, of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. You see that? Angels ascending and, and descending upon the Son of Man. Showing you again angels coming from the heavens, coming to the earth, going back to the heavens, coming to the earth. Represents the Heavenly Father's dominion and power, strength and authority and sovereignty over this earth. And his intervention in the affairs of man on this earth. Everything on this earth belongs to the Mosai. Not just the water that's over in in the land of Israel but every source of of everything that's on this planet belongs to the Mosai let's prove that let's go even deeper let's go to the book of Psalms in the 90th chapter we're gonna wind down in a few but let me just pull this these few precepts right here to show you here is Psalms the 90th chapter verse 1 the Lord thou has been our dwelling place in all generations before the mountains were brought forth or ever thou has formed the earth and the world even from everlasting to everlasting before he formed the earth and the world the world symbolically represents the people have you ever heard a song I believe it's by a group called the stylistics it's an old 70's group and they had a song called people make the world go around so it's people the people that make up the world and the, the earth is the planet that we live on who created everything who brought everything into existence in the book of Genesis the first chapter okay so the everything on this earth belongs to the Most High. So when they say that water over there is the Most High's water, but this water over here is not, that's foolishness. That's just those satanic, splinter Israelite groups out there that are making diabolical, satanic excuses why they do not agree and believe and teach the water baptism. Because just as the ancient Pharisees rejected it, they reject it. So these men are going to get rooted out. Okay? Let's go to the book of Matthew, the 28th chapter. Let's prove it again that it doesn't matter what land mass you are in. All of the water of the earth belongs unto the Most High. Here is Matthew, the 28th chapter. We're going to read verse 18. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and earth. You see that? All authority has been given unto the Most High. With, um, all power has been given unto the Messiah in heaven and in earth without measure meaning unlimited power unlimited power has been bestowed to the Messiah but his power definitely is not greater than the Most High because if it was then why would the Most High have to give him power if he already had power you see all authority and all power and strength will be given unto the Messiah for that thousand year millennial reign and he will reign as supreme ruler on this earth for a thousand years and then he merges his kingdom in with the father's kingdom watch my video kingdom of heaven get the breakdowns on that but listen 
19. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the earth. So he told his apostles to go all, all out. Go into different land masses and teach all nations. Teach all nations, mainly the children of Israel. We know that. But there, there are going to be Gentiles that are going to be believers too. And those Gentiles must hear the, the word of the Most High and be baptized also. Let's prove it. Let's prove it. If there's going to be total peace in the kingdom of heaven, right? In the kingdom of, of the Messiah's rule, that must mean that the Gentiles must be in order with Israel. Foremost with the Most High and the Messiah. Who the world calls Jesus Christ. So that means the Gentiles are going to have to be in order. Which means they're going, to have, they're, going, they're going to learn the right procedure on how to please the Most High. They're going to know their role and their position in the kingdom also. They're going to have to go through the baptism also. So this is what the process is, is, is showing us in the scriptures. That the Gentiles have to be baptized also. Some of you One West guys. Oh, that's talking about is, uh, Israelites living in the Gentile state of mind. There is one aspect of Israelites living like that, like our brothers and sisters following Islam. They are living like the Gentiles because they adopted their philosophies. That's true. That's why the Zondervan's Bible Dictionary tells you um, Gentiles. Usually it means a non-Israelite people. But in some cases it meant Israelites. That meant that there's Israelites that are living in a Gentile state of mind and they're also the Gentiles of the regular form, the natural form, meaning other races and other nationalities. But what about them that believe on Christ? What about them that want to be baptized? Let me, let, me, let me say something to you brothers. No matter what you say to these Gentiles, you're not going to sway their faith away from believing in the Most High. I don't care what you do. You can stand on those street corners and you can scream at these white people all you want. That white man or that white woman will tell you Jesus Christ is my King, Lord, and Savior, and I don't care what you say. You're not going to turn me against my, my Lord. Now, maybe a lot of the things you guys are saying, okay, we may not know the history like you guys do and know the scriptures like you, do, you guys do, but we know that Jesus Christ is our Lord too. We believe on him too. And you're not going to sway these, these Gentiles away from believing on the Messiah. They have been called. These other nationalities that believe strongly on the Lord Jesus Christ and they have been baptized in his name, you can't sway them. And we are not supposed to. We're supposed to just tell them the proper procedure of the scriptures and to let them know who the chosen people of the Most High is. But eventually they will find that out in that day of re uh, uh, reconciliation. They're going to find that out anyway. But you cannot sway their faith. So just show them the scriptures. Okay, but trying to tell them, you know, most I ain't dealing with you Gentiles and all, you're not going to sway their faith. They're not going to listen to you. They're, they're not going to agree with you. Okay, their heart is, is strong toward the Messiah because the Most High. you go and watch my video, Mysteries of the Gentiles, and I'll explain why. The Most High said he called out a remnant of the Gentiles that shall be called by my name. And he put that stamp and that seal upon them. So you can't change them. And they accept the baptism also. Now we're going to read about it. Here is the book of Acts, the 26th the chapter, verse 26. And the angel of the Lord spake unto Philip, saying, Arise, and go toward the south, and unto the way that goeth down unto Jerusalem, unto uh, Gaza, which is desert. Which is desert. And he arose, and went, and behold, a man of Ethiopia, and a eunuch of great authority under Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, who had charge over all her treasure, and had come to Jerusalem for to worship, was returning and sitting in his chariot, read Elias the prophet. Then the spirit said unto Philip, Go near and join thyself to this chariot. And Philip ran thither to him and heard him read the prophet Elias, which is Isaiah. Okay? And he said, Understand thou what thou read? And he said, how can I, except some man, should guide me? Most of you brothers, you need a teacher. Most of you sisters, you need a teacher. You can't learn a lot of this on your own. Okay? And he said, how can I, except some man... Let's read again. And he said, how can I, except some man, should guide me? And he desired Philip that he would come up and sit with him. The place of the scripture which he read was this. He was led as a sheep to the slaughter. And like a lamb dumb before his shear, 
so opened he not his mouth. And his humiliation, his judgment was taken away. And who shall declare his generation? For his life is taken from the earth. And the eunuch answered Philip and said, I pray thee, of whom speaketh the prophet this? Of whom? Of, of himself or of some other man? Then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus. And as they went on their way, they came unto a certain water. And the eunuch said, See, here is water. What doeth hinder me to be baptized? And Philip said, If thou believest with all thy heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And he commanded the chariot to stand still. And they went down into the water, both Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. And when they were Come up out of the water, the spirit of the Lord caught away Philip, that the eunuch saw him no more, and he went on his way rejoicing. You see that? So Philip baptized this, this man that was a believer and accepted the Mosai, and he accepted the Savior, our Messiah of Israel. So Philip's, the man asked Philip, what, what will prohibit me from being baptized? As long as you believe on the Messiah, you can be baptized. So there are Gentiles out there. That believe and that have been baptized. And you can't shake their faith. I say if they want to be baptized and they want to follow the Messiah, our Messiah, beautiful. Because if they did follow our Messiah, there wouldn't be so much distress on this earth and chaos on this earth today if they follow under the children of Israel. If we were in our rightful position and, and they followed what we teach them, there wouldn't be no chaos on this planet. That's what's going to happen in the kingdom. They're going to be under us and there's going to be total peace for a thousand years. Revelation the 20th chapter. Okay. Now, let's go to 1 Corinthians as we begin to wind down. 1 Corinthians the 12th chapter. 1 Corinthians the 12th chapter, we're going to read verse 13. For by one spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, we have been all made to drink into one spirit. You see that? So the Gentiles are going to get this too. A remnant of them are going to come into the fold. They're going to be under Israel, but of course they're going to come into the fold anyway. Because the Bible says, the Most High said he's going to make us kings and priests unto our God. Kings deal with men. Priests deal with the Most High. So, they're going to be kings set up from amongst our people, and they're going to be priests set up from amongst our people. Remember, kings deal with men. Priests deal with the Most High. So, the Gentiles are going to be in the kingdom, but we're going to be ruling over them, but they will be there also. And, and, they, and, and in order for them to be there, and they're going to be total harmony and peace, they must know and understand the commandments of the Most High, and they must understand who the Messiah is, and they, are, and they must understand to be willing to obey the prerequisite and the protocol of everything that the Father has initially ordained for them to follow and observe and to do. Here is 1 Peter, the third chapter, verse 21. 1 Peter 3 and 21. I mean, uh, 1 Peter, the third chapter, where, let's read verse 9. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness. The Lord is not slack in, in counting his promise he promised all Israel oh excuse me excuse me let me well let me read this anyway this is a good scripture the Lord is not slack concerning his promise as some men count slackness but is long-suffering to us usward not willing that any should perish but that all should come to repentance all should come to repentance that baptism helps us to come to repentance it is a constant memorial and a remembrance on our minds of our past deeds and the past things that we've done in our life to offend the most high so that's a beautiful scripture right there second peter the third chapter verse nine okay now let's go to first peter the third chapter let's read verse 21 the like figure whereunto even baptism doeth also now save us not putting away of the filth of the flesh see that it can't put away the filth filth physically of your flesh but spiritually it puts away the, 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 the filth of your flesh not putting away of the filth of the flesh but the answer of a good conscience toward God by the resurrection of Christ Jesus so that's what the baptism does it helps to put away wicked perverse thoughts it helps the way it helps to for you to focus more 
on the Most High. It helps, it helps you to walk onto your new life in a spiritual righteousness, uh, righteousness. Now, when the scriptures say that Christ didn't baptize, but his disciples baptized, that meant that Christ stood before all those that were about to be baptized. Let's, let me see if I can find that again. Let's go back to St. John, the third chapter. Okay? Because I wanted to really explain that. Okay. St. John, third chapter. And after these things came Jesus and his disciples into Galilee, and there he tarried with them and baptized. And John also was baptizing in Enon and near Salem, because there was much water there, and there came, and they came and, 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 were, and were baptized. There arose a question between some of John's disciples and Jews about purifying. And there came unto John and said unto him, Rabbi, he that was with thee beyond Jordan, and to whom that beareth witness, behold, the same baptized, and all men come to him. Okay? John answered and said unto him, Man, uh, actually, actually, let's read 27. John answered and said, Man can receive nothing except it be given from him from heaven. So, this is important. You brothers are not going to get this. You, a lot of you brothers and sisters are not going to get this because it wasn't meant for you to see it. It wasn't meant for a lot of you brothers to get this. Now I'm going to jump over to St. John the 4th chapter, but you brothers, y'all not going to get this. It wasn't meant for many of you to get this. The only ones that was going to get the true understanding of what the baptism symbolic represents is the ones that the Father has planted that seal upon. Now listen, let's go to St. John the 4th chapter, verse 1. When the Pharisees... When therefore the Lord knew how the Pharisees had heard that Jesus made and, and baptized more disciples than John, though Jesus himself baptized not but his disciples, Christ made the people stand before him, and, and he made these people testify of him. Do you accept me as your King, your Lord, and Savior? They said yes. Do you believe that I have the power to, to forgive you and heal, and heal your, your infirmities? Do you believe I have the power to forgive you of your sins? They said yes. All those who testified and believed that he was the son of the Most High, then his disciples took them and put them into the water. So he didn't physically do it. He had his disciples to do it. But he had the people to testify that he was the Messiah. That's why I wanted to explain that. Okay? Because Nathaniel 7 tried to pull that and say, see, Christ didn't baptize anybody. He had his disciples to do it, but he stood in the midst of, the, of his uh, disciples while they were baptizing believers. And he made the people testify. Do you accept me? Do you believe on me as the Messiah? They said yes. Do you accept that I am the Son of God? Do you accept that I'm the Son of the Most High? That I have the power to forgive sin? That I will reign, someday reign as King of Kings and Lord of Lords? Do you accept all the prophecies pertaining, uh, pertaining to me? They said yes. Then he baptized them into the water. And he said now brother, now sister, walk on into your new life. Meaning walk now into the spirit. You see? Walk on in the spiritual aspect of this baptism. There are two baptisms. One by the physical water, dying in the old man, and re-emerging as the new man or the new woman. And now you're walking in the spirit now. It's a conversion. A spiritual conversion of you being reformed into your new world, into your new life. Isaiah 1 and 16. Wash you, make you clean, put away the evil of your doings from before my eyes. Cease to do evil, learn to do well. Seek judgment, relieve the oppressed, judge the fatherless, plead for the widows. When it says, wash you, make you clean, clean up your mind. By studying this word and observing it to the best of your ability, that's how you clean up. That's another form of baptism. Okay, let's get Ephesians. And we'll shut it down. Let's go to the book of Ephesians. The fifth chapter. That he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of the word. Sanctifying and cleansing by the washing of the word is actually Ephesians, the fifth chapter, verse 22 to 25. It's talking about a husband and a wife cleansing their relationship and making their relationship spiritual before the Most High. And by the words of the Most High, your marriage will become cleansed by the word of the Most High. So with that, read the book of Acts, the 19th chapter, verse 1 to 8. And I hope everybody got something out of the study. The book of Acts, the 19th chapter, 1 to 8, when the Apostle Paul made those who were followers of John accept the baptism in, in the word of the Most High in Christ and baptism of the Holy Ghost.
And with that, I want to say, hope you brothers and sisters got something out of the study. Study this video over and over until you get the understanding. If you don't get it this video, I mean at this particular time, keep going back and forth, watching it until you get the understanding. And I pray that the most I open up your spiritual eye that you'll understand this. And many of you will go out and get baptized. And with that, I want to say peace to everybody who watched this video. Until we meet again, peace.